The first principle of herb cultivation is that medicinal plants should be grown in a location that meets the specific needs of the species. For example, kutki must be cultivated in a cool climate similar to its natural habitat high in the Himalayas. Brahmi requires a warm climate and plenty of water for irrigation. And ashwagandha is best grown in arid conditions in an alkaline soil with low fertility. The cultivation site should be in a clean location, away from potential sources of contamination, such as busy roads or chemical sprays from neighboring fields. The land should be prepared according to the requirements of the crop. Most herbs will yield the best results if the soil is nourished with plenty of compost. If the compost is made from farmyard manure, it should be well rotted before use and care should be taken to avoid any potential source of contamination, such as compost made from city waste. Water-loving species such as Brahmi can be grown in fields prepared in the same way as for growing rice. Other species such as Kutki prefer well aerated raised beds from which excess rainwater can easily drain during the monsoon. If the crop is propagated by seed, ensure that the seeds have been recently harvested are in good condition and free of pests and diseases. Whenever seeds are collected, a record should be kept of the date and place of collection. If there is any doubt about the identity of the species, an expert should be consulted to verify the name and variety. Depending on the established norms of the species, the seeds may either be sown in nursery beds and later transplanted, or they may be scattered or sown in lines directly in the main field. Either way, they should be sown and where necessary thinned in such a way that the seedlings grow with an appropriate spacing between the plants and the rows according to the requirements of the species. A record should be kept of the date of sowing and details of where the seeds came from so that the crop can later be traced back to its origin. Cutting should also be taken according to the standard practices for the species. There are many different vegetative propagation techniques. Guduchi, for example, is propagated through stem cuttings. Kutki is multiplied by taking cuttings from its rhizomes. Aloe vera is propagated by separating suckers from the mother plant. Other species, such as this tuberose, can be propagated through bulb division. If you are unsure which method to use for the species you are cultivating, seek guidance from a local expert. Whichever method you use, the cutting should only be taken from healthy plants. They should be taken at the right time and be of the correct size. The cutting should then be planted with an appropriate distance between the plants and the rows. If seedlings need to be transplanted from a nursery into the field, there are a number of principles to follow. The seedlings should be of a suitable size, which for most species is approximately four to six inches in height. There should be enough moisture in the soil in which the seedlings will be planted. And the transplanting should be done in the correct season and in suitable weather conditions. Planting in the afternoon or on a cloudy day is normally the best practice, as it will prevent stress caused by the heat of the midday sun. A record should be kept of the date and location of planting, with reference to the origin of the planting material. Each herb species should be irrigated according to its specific moisture requirements. The method you use will depend on how much water you have available and how much you are able or willing to invest. Some species can be irrigated using traditional flood irrigation methods. Others will have better results from using sprinklers. Or if there is a shortage of water, it may be worth investing in a drip irrigation system. Whichever method is used, the water should be from a clean source, free of any potential source of contamination, such as chemical runoff from fields further upstream. If you are in doubt about the quality of the water, take a sample and send it to a lab to be tested. Weeds should be controlled in accordance with the needs of the crop. 
The crop will normally grow better if it is not competing with weeds for soil nutrients and light. But care should also be taken not to continuously expose the soil to direct sunlight, as this will cause loss of moisture and nutrients. As a general rule of thumb, the first weeding should be done 20 days after germination. If the plants are grown in rows, then hoeing can be a quick and effective method of removing weeds. The weeds should always be removed before they produce seeds, so that they do not multiply out of control the following year. Mulching is an effective way of controlling weeds, as well as maintaining moisture in the soil. Using a biodegradable mulch also benefits the soil by adding nutrients and organic matter as it rots. In addition to weeding, some species also require topping or nipping to encourage growth. In this example, the flowers of Sfaid muesli are being removed to increase the yield and quality of its roots. The best way to control pests and diseases is to take measures to prevent them from occurring in the first place, either by selecting indigenous herb species that have greater resistance to the pests and diseases of the area, or by using organic methods such as intercropping, light traps or trap crops. If problems do occur, they should be tackled quickly to prevent the problem from growing out of control. If pests appear, the first step is to remove them by hand. If this is not possible, then you may try using an organic biopesticide such as neem oil spray, or by preparing your own preparations using locally available resources as advised by organic farming experts. Only in an emergency should you consider spraying a chemical pesticide, and that would only be acceptable if there is absolutely no trace of the chemical at the time of harvest. If you are certified organic, then agrochemicals should not be used under any circumstances. Medicinal herbs should be harvested when their active ingredients are at their highest. Kutki, for example, is ready for harvest after two to three years of growth and should be harvested when the leaves start to turn yellow before the onset of winter. Avoid harvesting herbs on a rainy day or early in the morning when there is dew on the ground. The quality of the herbs will be much better when harvested in dry conditions. Harvesting tools should be well cleaned before use and the harvested material should be placed in clean containers. When harvesting herbs such as Brahmi, care should be taken to avoid harvesting weeds. This may sometimes be difficult to avoid in which case someone should be inspecting the harvested material and manually removing the weeds. Details of the harvest, including any observations regarding the quality of the herb, should be recorded in the farmer's diary. When green leafy plants are being harvested in direct sunlight in a hot climate, such as this field mint in Uttar Pradesh, they should immediately be taken to a shady place to prevent the plants from wilting and then transported as quickly as possible to the processing unit. The more quickly the plants can be processed, the better the final quality of the herbal medicine will be.